Welcome back to Movie Rewind. Today I will recap for you a horror, mystery, drama movie from 2015 titled The Invitation. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. Los Angeles, California. Will and his girlfriend, Kira, head to a dinner party in the Hollywood Hills. It has been two years since Will has spoken to his ex-wife, following the tragic death of their son. Now remarried to a man she met in grief counseling, she has unexpectedly invited Will to a dinner party at the home they formerly shared. On the way, a coyote darts in front of Will's car. He pulls over and finds the coyote badly injured, but still alive. To end its suffering, he kills the coyote with a tire iron. They arrive at the house and find the door open for them. Upon entering, Will has a flashback of his son, constructing a puzzle in the living room. Already present are several other friends he hasn't seen in two years. Tommy and his boyfriend, Miguel, Gina, whose boyfriend Troy is running late, and other friends Claire and Ben, his ex-wife, Eden, then greets him, and he meets her new husband, David. Everyone is elated to see him, and Tommy raves about the wine selection as they settle in. Will also notices a woman that he doesn't recognize, and she is soon introduced as Sadie, Eden's friend who she met in Mexico. Despite the light-hearted atmosphere, Will struggles with the memories his former home seems to evoke. He strays off to the kitchen to get a glass of water, and has another flashback of Eden trying to take her own life at the same sink. Eden comes to check on him and he asks why there are bars covering the windows. She reminds him that she was living there alone before she met David, and had the bars added for security. She asks Will how he has been doing, noting how helpful her grief counseling was in relieving her pain. Ben overhears the conversation and jokes that she sounds like an advertisement. Eden slaps him in the face and walks out of the kitchen, and Ben takes the opportunity to gripe about his estranged wife for a bit. They go to rejoin the group and Eden apologizes for overreacting. She offers Ben a drink and he quickly forgets about the outburst. Soon after, another guest, Pruitt, arrives at the house. He is warmly welcomed by Sadie and the two hosts, but unfamiliar to the others. Gina complains that Choi still hasn't arrived and goes to the backyard to try calling, as the reception in the hills is spotty. Will then spots David locking the door from inside and asks why it's necessary. He explains that there was a home invasion recently in their area, but he leaves the key to make Will feel more comfortable. Will goes to the backyard to replenish the firewood. Being there elicits another flashback, this time of his son's birthday party. He sees Eden quickly deposit something in the bedroom nightstand and later discovers it was an unmarked pill bottle. David sees Will in the bedroom, but assumes he is just reminiscing and says he can rejoin them whenever he's ready. In the living room, Eden talks about a support group called The Invitation, which is how she ended up traveling to Mexico where she met Sadie and Pruitt. Some of the friends tease her, calling it a cult, but Ben says he has heard positive things about The Invitation, his co-worker having also endorsed it. David adds that it has helped thousands of people across the country and he plays a video to show them what it's about. The host of the video says that the human brain possesses the ability to heal under the proper conditions, and that he has made it his life's work to rehabilitate traumatic experiences. It then documents a middle-aged woman's final moments, as she slowly nods off to her death. Several of the group members find the final scene unsettling. Eden explains that the woman suffered from terminal cancer, and allowed herself to be filmed to show others that death isn't something to be afraid of. David used to abuse cocaine in order to cope with his grief but has been completely clean ever since he found the invitation. The doorbell rings and David goes to answer it. Will watches him intently but can't make out who he is talking to. He says it was just a neighbor that saw all the cars and came looking for a party. Will then pulls Miguel aside and shows him one of Eden's pills. Miguel, a physician, says he believes it is a barbiturate. Like most prescription medications, it's only dangerous if you take too much of it. Will asks if he thinks the night is strange, but he says it's just a normal get-together amongst friends who haven't seen each other for a while. David apologizes for showing the video and suggests they play a game. The game is called What I Want, where each person simply shares one thing that they want. Sadie starts by listing everyone by name and says that she loves them. She then leans over and kisses Gina on the lips. Gina says she wants some of the coke David used to do, which he retrieves from a nearby drawer. She backpedals, claiming she was only joking, but accepts after David says that's the whole point of the game. Eden then says she wants to kiss Ben. He plays along, giving her a quick peck, but she full-on kisses him right after. 
At that point, Claire says she's uncomfortable, and prepares to leave. David asks her to stay a bit longer, but Will intervenes and tells him to let her go. She says her goodbyes to everyone, and Pruitt walks out with her to move his car. Still suspicious, Will watches them from the window, but Pruitt moves his car to let her out, and David asks if he can speak to Will privately. He asks Will if he is okay, noting his reaction to the door being locked and Pruitt moving his car. Will apologizes, admitting that he may not have been ready to return to his former home, especially with so many people around. They rejoin the group to eat dinner and Will has another flashback, showing that his son was killed on his birthday. They finish dinner and Will goes outside to get some air. Sadie joins him there, and begins hitting on him. She says she can tell things aren't going well with his girlfriend, and flat out offers herself to him. She tells him that while in Mexico they would often have sex spontaneously, as it's important not to deny yourself pleasure. Will sternly rejects her advances and tells her to go back inside. Tommy then joins, and Will reiterates his concerns about the party. Tommy replies that Claire left because she is sexually awkward, and Troy is habitually late. He tells Will that he is freaking people out, then hugs him before returning to the house. Will's phone regains a signal long enough for a voicemail to come through. It's Troy, who says he arrived at the party early but realized he forgot the dessert. He asks Will to pick it up if he's still on the way there. Hearing this, Will returns to the dining room where they are celebrating Miguel's birthday. The lights come back on, and Will demands to know where Troy is. He tells them about the voicemail, but Eden and David insist that he never showed up. Will becomes even more irritated. He chastises his friends for being so polite, and questions why they were invited after a two-year absence. Will refers to Pruitt and Sadie as cult members, and interrogates Eden about the pills in the nightstand. The tension is paused when the doorbell rings again. Troy enters the house and says he was in the driveway when he got a call from work. Everyone just looks at Will, speechless, as he breaks down in tears and apologizes. Will takes a moment to collect himself and rejoins the party, where Eden is cutting the cake. He asks if he can see their son's bedroom, and she tells him of course. He walks around the room and envisions his son peacefully sleeping. He lays down and places his head on the pillow, and he can see his son looking back at him. Through the window, David is observed lighting a red lantern at the edge of the yard. Will then retrieves the laptop and watches the end of the video. The leader of the invitation says not to be scared, that a reward awaits them if they give themselves over. Pruitt knocks on the door, saying everyone is waiting for him, as the leader ends the video by telling the viewers that he loves them. Will returns to the group where everyone has poured another glass of wine, and they raise their glasses to toast. He smashes the glasses out of everyone's hands, yelling at them not to drink. He tells Kira that they're leaving, and Sadie rushes at him, screaming that he's ruining everything. Will pushes her away, causing her to fall and hit her head. As Miguel kneels to check on her, they also discover that Gina, who had drunk from the wine glass, has stopped breathing. Miguel removes the foam from her mouth and begins administering CPR, when he is abruptly shot by David. As everyone backs away, Pruitt takes the gun and turns it on Choi. Everyone scatters, except for Tommy. Furious about his boyfriend's death, he lunges at David, but Sadie intercepts him and slashes him with a knife. Will and Kira find an empty room and lock themselves inside, but the windows are barred. David is seen in the backyard stabbing Ben, he is joined there by Pruitt, who shoots Ben dead. They re-enter the house to look for another exit, and find David consoling Eden, who is upset by all the murders happening. David talks her down by saying they were chosen for a purpose, and tells her they will soon escape the pain. David and Eden walk off, and Will leads Kira upstairs, where there is an exit to the garage. They pass Sadie dying on the couch, having impaled herself with a fireplace poker. Unable to make any noise, Will approaches and takes the poker from her lap. They make it to the upstairs room, but Will discovers that the garage exit has since been removed. Pruitt searches for them, carrying the gun in hand. Will surprises him and they begin fighting, until Pruitt gets Will in a chokehold. Before he can kill him, Kira picks up the poker, and uses it to kill Pruitt. They exit the room, and immediately run into Eden. She turns around with the gun and shoots Will in the shoulder. She looks up and apologizes, then shoots herself in the stomach. With only David remaining, he walks around with a butcher knife, searching for any survivors. Will realizes that the gun is empty, so he calls out that they have a gun. David ignores the threat, saying it is also his time to die. Before he can reach them, Tommy tackles David and wrestles for the knife. It ends up facing David and Tommy plunges it into his chest. 
Will returns to Eden, who is critically injured but still alive. She tearfully tells Will that she also misses their son, and asks him to take her outside to die. Will carries Eden to the backyard. He kneels beside her as she peacefully passes away. The sounds of sirens are heard nearby, and a helicopter flies overhead. Kira and Will walk to the side of the hill, and see that the hillside is covered with red lanterns. The party wasn't an isolated incident. All of the cult members from the invitation were doing the same that night. Okay guys, thank you for watching. Please leave a like on the video, and subscribe to see more.